Welcome back to the Major Scales Unit of Study. We are learning music theory to scales. It's helping us build the vocabulary for future, more difficult and challenging musical things. Today we are learning in the key of E, the E major scale. I know we do this every time, but every time we look at it, we get more familiar with it. So looking at the circle of fifths, we did C, which is all naturals. We did G, which had one sharp, F sharp. We did D, which had two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. We did A, which had three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and, oh my goodness, G sharp, <laughs> there we go. And now we are doing the key of E, which of course has four sharps. Who I am out of breath. Now, okay, here I'm gonna say something for like my absolute music theory nerds. If you look at the circle of fifths, starting from C, if you know the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, that's five steps, right? Well, if you notice on the circle of fifths, from C, the next one is G. Now, if you look at the next one from G, it's D, G, A, B, C, D. So the reason it's called fifths is because the notes on the circle of fifths are a fifth step difference from each other. So this way you can always predict which scale is coming next. If you forgot it, for example, like, wait, what's after C? Like, just count up five steps. C, D, E, F, G. G, A, B, C, D. D, E, F, sharp, G, A. It's always a fifth apart. Okay, that's for the absolute nerds. If that just flew way over your head, that's okay. I promise you, if, we, if you repeat the course, once you've absorbed this stuff, um, it'll make sense. So let's find E and start our scale. We have this open E. Memorize the sound. And let's find it on our C string. It's on the fourth fret. So let's start our scale. We want index, ring, index, middle, pinky, index, ring, pinky. And if you're a total nerd and want to play a chord at the end, your pinky's already on the spot, so just bar. Again. Pause the video here if you need to like kind of work that through your fingers. Or if you want certain parts to go slower, there is a settings icon and you can change the speed of the video. Okay, so I'm recording in Calexico, which is like a super Mexican-American community. I don't know if you just heard the like banda playing in the background. If you did, I'm so sorry. Okay, now let's look at A major chord, everyone's favorite chord. Um, I'm gonna play it this way. And looking at the scale for this one, we need an E, a G sharp, and a B because we're basing it off of the one, three, and five. That gives us our major chord. So let's check. Okay, we have this first one is B, right? G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Next one, that would be C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So we have E and B, the one and the five. Next, well that sounds like a G sharp. And, ah, B. our E major chord. Now, you know that we've done E major scale, right? So which one would be next? Not looking at the circle of fifths. Look at the fifth step away, B. So now you know that that's the one we're doing next, so you can kind of mentally get ahead. Now this one had four sharps, so how, much, how many sharps will B have? Five. So this is why the circle of fifth makes sense. It's an organized way of putting all of the information that we can derive from C to get the rest of the major, the circle of fits. Now, a test that we will have at the end of the course is one that I did in my music theory class, which was to draw the circle of fits from scratch. And I will teach you how to do it first, and then we will have our own little test. But if you wanna start kind of practicing the ones that you know already, that would really help. Alrighty, I will see you in the next one. Sayonara!